What's going on everybody? Good to see everyone back. Uh, so today I have this really cool board to show you guys. I think that I've been eyeing this particular board on the House of Staunton website for like probably the past two years maybe and it seems like every time I go to see if this particular board's available it, it was out of stock for the most part. So this board is going to be a little bit different from all the other boards that I've shown you pretty much because this board is a board and storage combination. There were some reservations that I've had looking at this online and I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain to you what things that I felt like, you know, having, having seen the pictures of this board and everything, what reservations I had when it came to even, you know, considering this board. Part of the reason why I really wanted to get this box, well, for one, it was on sale. Two is, I just wanted to show you guys what it looks like. And I wanted to talk to you guys about this box because I feel like this is a really great option in some situations. So on both sides here, and I'm going to show you guys closer view, uh, you have these uh, pretty large compartments that do come out completely. There is, so the compartments look more or less like this and they're felted all inside. And that was another one of my reservations is that I've, when I was looking at the pictures online, I've never actually been able to see what the compartments look like. And just like this and also like the chest coffers where there's compartments, I'm always questioning if they're not giving me measurements of the actual compartments, am I going to be able to fit my pieces in there? And most of the time, yes, but sometimes like with the previous video where I did the Modena chest set and the knights were extra large and extra wide, I felt like, is it going to fit that particular set? So I want to go ahead and start by saying that this board is actually a 2.25 inch square diameter. There is also different sizes. I know there's a 1.75, I think a 2.25. I am not entirely sure if they have like a bigger size, but I would actually, I don't have the 1.75 uh, inch square board, but I would actually be interested to know if anybody has this in a 1.75, let me know if you feel like the compartments are just as big, or do you feel like, me, like my suspicion is that the compartments here are going to be kind of more or less appropriate to the size of the squares and I kind of have a feeling that the smaller board will come with smaller compartments which would make sense because the smaller board would probably only be able to accommodate smaller pieces so you wouldn't necessarily need bigger compartments but it would just be interesting for me to know so that I could kind of relate that to the people out there so that they would also know. Well, first of all, what you can see here is that this box is pretty thick. So if I raise it up a little bit, and I'll show this up close, it does stand on these like little metal ball, a uh, little metal um, base legs, I guess you can call it. This table, I think, is about 29 inches off the ground, which may seem not a whole lot, but the standard height of a table uh, like a regular table would be somewhere between like 27 to maybe like 32 inches off the ground. Tournament tables are about probably about right around in, uh, 30 inches off the ground. Chairs are, this is a, a, a low ottoman and I'm actually sitting lower than a regular chair would be. The reason why I'm telling you all, all this is because when you have a board that's like either a vinyl board, a mouse pad board, or maybe like a, a, just a regular board that's on the table and you're playing a tournament, there is a certain angle from where your eyes are to where it comes down. So there's a certain angle with regards to your posture and the way that your eyes hit the board. And that angle is probably going to be somewhere in the range of, I don't know the exact numbers, but I mean, you're looking at like 45 degrees, maybe whatever that angle is, 
having that angle allows you to see the board more from an upright position. And when you're looking at the board from a more of an upright position, it allows you to, at least for me, to be able to kind of mm, play the game a little bit better. I can see the board a little bit better. For the same reason when you know you play those online games, online chess games, I particularly don't like when they have those 3D ones where you're looking through different angles and you're going down and up and you can change all the angles. I'm a simple person. I like to be able to see it in a very two-dimensional way, like on, usually on a wooden theme board, but I like it two-dimensional so that I can see all the little pathways and everything. I like it in two-dimensional. I don't mind having, you know, going to tournaments and seeing it at a, like a 45 degree angle, but one of my reservations that I had about this particular board is that because it's so much higher off the table, it raises that angle more like, you know, to become a little bit too more to where you're, you're looking at it along the surface. And that's fine when I'm showing you guys certain chess pieces. That's what I end up doing a lot of times is I set the camera right next to the board at a very parallel angle so that I can show you guys how the chess pieces stand on the board. But when you're playing a game, I feel like you don't need to be doing this just because, I don't know, then you won't be able to see the board all that well. And that was one of my reservations is like I said, because the board is so higher up, you're now shifting that angle. And I thought to myself, is this going to be a problem? And I can probably say that at this point, seeing how this board is sitting in front of me, yeah, it changes a little bit. And I feel like for that reason, this board, in my opinion, and you know, you guys can correct me for those who have this board or have a board that's this high. In my opinion, um, if you had more of like a coffee table situation where you could, you know, the coffee tables are gonna be that much lower to the ground. And so when you put that actually in that situation, it would be, uh, you know, really appropriate because, you know, the coffee table is pretty low. In fact, if you have a coffee table and two like lounge chairs or whatever the case is, and this is somewhere in a parlor or a living room, and it's like a very casual game, then yeah, like in fact, that coffee table would probably be too low for a regular vinyl board or like a small wooden board. But for this one, it actually gives it a little bit more height and you have no problem, okay? So that was one of my reservations. Second one, obviously, because I haven't seen the inside of these drawers, I didn't know whether or not my pieces are gonna fit in here. And it, you know, um, just like with the coffers, with the chest coffers, if you have something where they tell you on the website, they, they only tell you like, this can only fit a maximum of 4.4 inch king. So that's what I'm gonna go ahead and we'll take a closer look at, uh, I'm gonna try a couple of different pieces of mine to see if we can fit all the pieces properly in here because um, I want you guys to get the proper measurements from this video so that in case you do consider getting this board, you would at least be able to know like if your pieces are gonna fit into into the slots here because you know the worst thing that you can get at this point is if you are not sure and your pieces are not standard size or they're a little bit too big then you get this and boom like <laughs> some pieces don't fit and so then what do you do you know so this is where I wanted to show you guys up close because this uh, this type of uh, footage right here for me would have been really helpful. Uh, but when you take out and and both sides are exactly the same, but you know you you can take it out completely as you could see. Uh, the felt is like not super thick; it's uh, black felt. Um, one of the things I saw, I'm not sure if this is intentional or not, but you can you can actually like remove a piece. I'm not sure if they just forgot to glue it back in or whatever the case is, but maybe the way that some of these can be kind of, like I, I tried to prod around on the other ones and, and everything else is pretty glued in, but uh, that particular one, I guess I could glue it back in if I wanted to. So let's take a closer look as far as like, what measurements do we have when it comes to the, the thickness of these particular like uh, boxes. So let's measure this. 151.1 millimeters. So 15 centimeters in length here and 
46.6 millimeters wide. So that's that particular box. This one's here is at 69 millimeters and 46 once again. 48 uh, here and 69 once again. So these are all gonna be very similar. There is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm assuming for ponds, with the very last one here being a little bit, a little bit bigger. So this one is at 66 compared to 47. And then as far as the height, we're looking at 69, 68, right around there. Now these boxes here in between, I'm guessing that these boxes is where you would put your knights, your rooks, and your bishops. Uh, being similar on the other side. So the width of this box is going to be 45 millimeters and my guess is that there are going to be 47, 45, and 44. So not exactly, uh, not exact, but very similar. 87 um, going to be your, your, your length here, 87 millimeters, and then 86 is going to be your, your, your length here. Let's take a closer look at this side and finish everything up by putting pieces in here. Uh, 60 uh, millimeters thickness and more or less probably around 150, almost 151. Same here, 151 and probably same here, 151. Yeah. So, and then the width of this box is 66. This is 62, and this one's at 60. So why don't we go ahead and having said that, we'll try a couple of different sets and see what we have as far as, and see what we have as far as being able to fit pieces in here. This is gonna be example of a very kind of a small library set. King, queen, knight, bishop, Rook, pawns, or everything fits. So this is the library set, and this is going to be a smaller set. These are these are pretty small pieces. So everything fits, and there's plenty, plenty of room for you know you to be able to fit smaller pieces in here. But because this board is going to be a 2.25, you're probably not going to end up getting, you know, your pieces. You want them to be a little bit bigger because a 2.25 is not that, you know, it's a big board, so you probably want to end up getting slightly bigger pieces. So let's go ahead and take a look at the Paulson set, and we've seen this numerous times. So, uh-oh, here's the problem. We, we, once we start to fit in limitations, the king will fit here, though, so that's no problem. The queen will fit here, so that's, that's not, a, not a big issue. Knight, will knight fit in here? The knight fits in here, but it's a little snug. Let's take a look at the bishop, the pawns. Pawn fits without a problem. Bishop, bishop fits. Good, good. Bishop fits, knight fits, and rook. So look, uh, the, this is the Paulson set. Everything will fit nicely. Okay. I don't know. There's one extra box here, as you could see. Right here. For, because you have like the queen. The king, the extra queen, then you got your, your rook, knight, bishop, rook, knight, bishop, all the pawns, and then you have the extra, which I'm not really sure what you would need an extra for. Okay, so that works. Okay, now the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and try the Madame set and see how uh, these more luxury chess sets are gonna be able to fit in these, in these particular boxes. Okay, let's see. King is probably not gonna fit. No, the king doesn't fit. The base is too large here but the base is okay on this side. So the king fits. In fact, the king fits and there's plenty of room. I think this is a 4.3 or a 4.4. Um, yeah, this is pretty large. So you guys could potentially even fit something as big as, well, 150, 150. So there you guys have it, 150 millimeters. So plenty of room for, for that particular piece. Queen probably see the queen of this one has a base that's going to be a little bit larger so it doesn't fit here but no problem fitting the queen here and of course you're going to have the other queen right over here okay 
Now the biggest question is, are the knights gonna fit? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, actually no, look at that, the knights fit. I thought they weren't going to. Very, very snug though. Super snug, but the knights fit. Both of them do, in fact. Uh, rooks fit. Uh, let's take a look, bishops. Bishop, 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 bishop. Bishops don't fit. Uh-oh. The bishops won't fit, but we can fit one bishop here. Hmm, how can we fix this situation? You see, if, if one of the pieces don't fit, then you you got a problem. You got a problem if one of the pieces won't fit. Well, I guess what you could do is you could probably just kind of like... Yeah, you could probably do something like this. Queen goes here, the second queen goes here, and you got an extra bishop right here. Not ideal, but things will fit. We're gonna make him fit. And one of the bishops will go... How about the pawns? The pawns fit, because these are extra big pawns. We'll put one bishop here. So that's this will work, probably. Pawns like have enough room, but definitely that was a you know these these bishops are a little big, so we we with that little extra bit on top, we just didn't have space for it, I suppose. Well, and then we got the not ideal because we got to put the other pawn right here. Okay, so we fit everything. This is how the Medina chess set pieces would look on this particular board. This is where I was telling you guys about last time in the last video where uh, they do highly recommend that you get a 2.5 inch square board for these particular pieces being that the bases are going to be that much wider. And you could see, I mean, the pieces fit here nicely, but they do feel a little bit crammed. And let me know if what you guys think, because I, I feel like they're a little bit cramped, but I mean, still just as, just as playable, you know, just as, you know, um, the pieces still look really nice. And, uh, overall the, the board is really smooth, so... This is exactly how my other big, the big board feels. So because it has a really nice felt, this is where the such nice felt will, will really be felt nice on, on this particular board. So that's part of the reason why I ended up getting this board in the first place was I just, I just needed a, to, to get a, some kind of a case for, for these pieces. So I figured, hey, getting a board and having a storage for my pieces. So this kind of, uh, this kind of, you know, seemed to have worked out nicely. This is how the dark and light pieces of the Medina set will look on this particular board. Um, for any people out there that are worried about uh, the pieces blending in with the color of the of the board squares, in that particular case I think that the bud rosewood or the blood rosewood um, would contrast pretty nicely with this particular board so I don't think you would have an issue with colors blending in. Now if you had the acacia wood, uh, that might be a little bit more likely to blend in, but as far as the the light square uh, light square pieces and light uh, light squares, they are a little bit closer to the color of the squares, but it's not that bad as you could see. I mean, you're not likely to miss because the this boxwood still has enough contrast with the squares to where you wouldn't necessarily be lost and like, oh my God, I missed a, a bishop because it completely blended in. I don't think that would be an issue overall. My other board, the squares are like a lot lighter, so it makes any type of boxwood uh, less likely to blend in, period. But in this case, there you have it, okay? I wanna put it in the Paulson series set on this board for you guys to see real quick so that you could see how pieces that are a little bit more contrasty would look on this particular board. Just wanted to show you guys before I show you the Paulson is how the light pieces look here. I still haven't glued in the little uh, the little weight but I did get the epoxy so I'm gonna go ahead and glue it in but I feel like it doesn't it doesn't look bad it looks really attractive almost like a showcase box because every piece has a uh, space for where it needs to go and everything looks really pretty, really attractive. 
both the light and the dark square pieces go really nicely. And then just put it in and that's it. If your nights are super duper elaborate, you know, be be sure to, to, to watch this video and check the measurements of your pieces before you order a board like this because the last thing I want you guys is to get a board like this, be super excited and then say, dang, you know, like my knights or my bishops, they, don't, they just don't fit. And now half of my pieces fit nicely and then the other half, it's not working out really well. So then, you know, wouldn't want you guys to be disappointed. Let's take a look at the Paulson set and see how it looks on that board. Okay, so this is the Paulson series chess pieces here on the uh, on this board and they actually look very, very attractive as well. <clears throat> I really like how these these dark genuine ebony uh, pieces contrast nicely with, uh, with with the board squares. It just makes an overall feel um, that much nicer. The uh, uh, antique boxwood uh, chess set here, I think they're lacquered with something, but they also kind of contrast with the pieces a little bit better than the other set, but um, overall, you know, let me let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Do you do you like this set on on top of this board, or do you like the Medena set? Which one um, is more preferable to you guys? Show you the light pieces, the dark pieces. Oh, and another thing is that the bases of these pieces are going to be a little bit smaller, like the diameter, so the pieces don't feel as cramped as the the other set does. Overall, the board is not very heavy. If you, you can lift it, the underside looks like just wood, okay? Just nice wood put together. Everything's built pretty nicely. But one of the things is that if you're carrying this across the room or something, say, say you wanna bring this from one room to another, be aware that if you kind of flip this, there's no locking mechanism on this. So if you're walking, you have to keep this board balanced because your pieces are going to come flying out. So, so let's say we pick it up and we're walking, you know, that front compartment or back compartment is just going to slide out. Okay. The way that the compartments are positioned in there is that there is no like side rails or anything on inside. So when you slide this out, it basically slides by the fact that there's just wood and that wood slides uh, along the sides of the other wood. One of my reservations was not so much a reservation, but I felt like um, the folding chess boards, for example, the, the video that I did not too long ago about the walnut uh, folding chess board, it, uh, it, it has a compact factor. You can, you can fold it, put it in that bag that I reviewed and then put the bag for, Hey, I mean, you can, you can put a hook on the wall and you can, you can just put the bag and, and it'll stay right up against the wall. So, so as far as space, like where that bag can be placed pretty much anywhere, you can shove that bag under the bed. You can, you can do just about anything with it. My other chess boards, like the, the bigger ones, well, what I usually do is, is I put it underneath the entertainment center because we have just, just enough space underneath the entertainment center for me to slide that in and kids don't get to it and you know we don't have dogs, but if we did have dogs, dogs, dogs wouldn't be able to get underneath there. So it just slides right in. And then when it's time for me to take it out, I just kind of get my fingers on the sides and carefully pull the board out. I could keep it underneath the bed, but I feel like the bigger boards, you have to figure out a way to keep them somewhere when you're not playing. We would all be pretty lucky if we could just have a table or a room designated to chess, but the reality of the situation is that we don't. We Most of the time we have to figure out like all this chess stuff that we love to play. Unfortunately, we don't play chess like 24 seven. And if, it, if, it, if we're lucky, we're able to play chess once a week, twice a week, or whatever the case is. Um, in the meantime, we, we have to find places to, to keep and store all that stuff. And, and uh, the footprint, like how much space something occupies becomes important because if you get, for example, that's why I never ended up getting a chess table just because, well, I live in an apartment and uh, getting a chess table would mean that for majority of the time, that chess table would either have to be uh, a table for kids to draw on and use as like a crafts table or 
or I would have a really hard time figuring out where to put it if if I if, if nobody were to use it. So if I had a big house and I had a space to where, you know, I, I just I had so much room I could put a chess table somewhere, then yeah, that, that would be a totally different story. But that's why for the for most of us I feel like it's it's just so so important to to keep you know the, the size of these things in mind, okay? With that being said, this is a pretty big board and you could keep this underneath your bed, I guess. You could keep it. It's hard to say where to, where to keep it because, you know, you can't really stand it up because if you keep it standing up, the weight of the board, especially if you have the pieces in there, it's going to end up damaging the sides very easily because the wood on the sides will just get like molded in and I just don't think it's ideal to keep it upright. So you have to keep it like this and that means that it's it's a pretty pretty large board and it's a pretty tall board so under the bed or if you have enough space and where wherever you happen to live maybe on a table or somewhere. I feel like this is probably going to be for people who just want to get something that's like a all together. They don't want to have to mess around like looking for where the pieces are. Some of my chess boxes come with a a little key so if you if your friends come over and you want to set up and play play a couple of games then you end up like oh my goodness I, I got everything I don't even know where the key is so you have all your pieces within the actual box you don't have to go looking around for anything and uh, you know you always know where they are you just open them up you know put them up and start playing in my opinion I feel like where this particular setup would excel the most could be maybe in a situation where, you know, if you have like a business office type of thing, maybe with, with like a where there's a break room and the people love playing chess. So a lot of times during break, they will want to play chess. This could be standing on a table where uh, once again, if let's say you live somewhere where there's a lot of people who love to play chess in their spare time this would be pretty awesome somewhere for an office because you wouldn't need to be looking for your pieces separately the pieces are always here they all they do is they come during their break hour they set up the pieces they play and then they put the pieces up and it it just seems to work out fine and in this particular situation i would say that would be like in my opinion an ideal setup as far as having this for home, I feel like a lot of people might want this and they do want this because even in times when the majority of the other merchandise was not sold out, these boards a lot of times were. And if you wanted to get this board with the pieces, a lot of times you couldn't get that because even though the pieces are available, the boards were, would always be sold out. So. Definitely, I feel like definitely this would appeal to a lot of people. Another thing is the way that it's built, okay? Uh, the top of it, so you have the condensed wood and then on top you have like a smaller piece of wood that's glued on to like a compressed piece of wood. Uh, it's hard for me to be able to gauge exactly how thick that condensed piece of wood is, but it, it's, it seems like when I tap around on the board that it, it seems like it's thick enough it's probably like maybe a quarter of an inch it's hard hard to gauge either way just like my elm burl a bird's eye maple superior traditional chessboard it has a really nice smoothness to it so the pieces will uh, play on this particular board really nicely one of the things that I did see is that from time to time I saw some of these boards that were damaged or worn out and the vinyl sometimes starts to separate and it actually will start to kind of pull up a little bit on the edges which is definitely not something that I would want to see. If on this video you think that based on how the angles are with the camera if, if it feels to you like this side here is raised up a little bit it's not. It, it may look that way on the camera, but it's not raised up. Everything's sitting nice, nice and smooth and flat. 
Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, once again, uh, I tried not to make this video too long, but sometimes I get carried away. When I get really excited about showing you guys something, I definitely get a little carried away. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up for this video, and I just wanted to say that, once again, thanks so much. I've had a lot of people with, who have had some some really, really interesting comments. I know that there's a lot of people who know a lot of like intricacies and details when it comes to chess sets, chess wood. It's like really, really, I'm, I'm taken aback by all the great comments and like really interesting. And I'm, I'm learning at the same time quite a bit of, of things that like I didn't realize. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, once again, thanks for watching my video. Uh, before I go, I just wanted to say thanks a lot, everybody, for all of the new subscriptions, for all of the positive comments. In fact, the comments that I've been getting on some of these videos are definitely like making me realize how much interest there is out there in chess equipment, chess merchandise, and uh, I am, I'm, like I said, I'm really taken aback by the amount of information that people are coming forth to me with, and they're saying like, this is, this is about like the the wood processing and everything. There's so much stuff that I wasn't, you know, aware of before. So, with that being said, uh, once again, thanks, guys. Uh, stay tuned, and uh, I'll see you guys next time. Okay, bye bye.